Big news today as Florida State has landed a big-time piece in the transfer portal along the defensive line. Took a couple more years than we wanted it to, but Marvin Jones Jr. picks the Seminoles, and the legacy recruit will finally be in the Garnet and Gold. Now, you guys remember 2021 when we all wanted MJJ out of the high school ranks, but he ended up picking UGA in a day that is pretty forgettable for most FSU fans, but relationships stayed pretty strong. And the fact that his dad is the greatest linebacker to ever play in Tallahassee certainly did not hurt FSU's chances. Florida State stays pretty hot in the transfer portal, something they've basically written the book on over the last two off seasons. But MJJ is the number 11 overall prospect in the on three industry portal rankings. There's a lot of talk one way or the other on what this pickup means, how good he can truly be for the Seminoles. We'll talk about all of that today, of course, but a big time pickup for the Knowles. Nonetheless, he's the number two overall edge prospect in the on three industry rankings. Miami was rumored to be involved here as well, and they tried to make a play on this, but Florida State was having absolutely none of that, and they shut it down, and the Knowles land the talented edge rusher. Now, Marvin Jones Jr. is 6'4", 253 pounds. He's originally out of American Heritage High School down in South Florida. His production at UGA was somewhat limited. 16 tackles for his career, 5.5 for a loss, two sacks. One of those sacks did come against Florida this year in the cocktail party, and then one forced fumble. Most of that production coming in 2023. He didn't make a huge splash or a huge impact during his freshman year. Also spent some time battling an injury. He's been rumored to have had surgery. I think that that has limited somewhat as well. Now, I mean this with all due respect, but Florida State fans that are expecting Jared Verse 2.0, a kid that just steps in and absolutely takes over from the word go, should probably back off those expectations just a tad. I think Marvin Jones Jr. can be very good for the Knowles, but I think it's going to take a little bit of time for him to develop and be developed, which this staff does a very, very good job at. I think it's part of the recruiting pitch. Hey, don't like the way things are going at UGA. Don't like the way that you're being used or developed there. Come home. We'll get you taken care of. We'll get you to that next level that you want to get to. Now, UGA does a great job of getting guys to the league, developing defensive line. They do a great job there. Played a lot of linebacker outside uh, for UGA. I don't think that'll be how he's used as much here in Tallahassee. Uh, and so I think that went a long way to the Knowles securing this commitment. I think that Marvin Jones Jr. can be a very good player in 2024, even a plus player. I don't know that as of today, I project him to start on Florida State's defensive line. There's a lot of questions around Pat Payton uh, with Gilbert Edmonds still there, Byron Turner. I think that he fits in somewhere between that two and four spot, right? I, I think that he'd certainly be behind Pat Payton. I think Edmond might be a slight bit ahead of him. And then I think he'd probably be a rotational depth piece um, there, maybe your third, fourth best defensive end in 2024 if they're not able to pick up anybody else in the portal there could be more additions in the portal for sure but florida state likes to rotate their defensive ends a ton they did it with their defensive line all year last year and it really showed up late in the year when you saw what they did against florida and louisville having those guys fresh so don't think that just because he doesn't start he's not a valued piece that can add a ton now what you could see is a plus player a good player in 2024 and then an elite to great player in 2025 for the Seminoles if he's able to be developed, if he's able to take that next step forward. I have no doubts about the fact that he will be. You look at what Florida State's done and their track record at defensive end from Keir Thomas to Jermaine Johnson to Jared Verse to Pat Payton and more, they've done a really good job of developing guys. I look for Gilbert Edmond to take that next step here in 2024, his second year in the system, and I also think that Marvin Jones Jr. can have a good 2024 and then a great 2025 if that's the way that it all pans out a huge shout out to the battles end it's a commitment video so we certainly have our battles end quarter zip on we certainly appreciate all the work that they do 
And any time that we get a commitment, that is what we're going to put on. We're going to put on the Battles in Quarter Zip. Listen, we've asked you guys over and over and over again to go support them. We certainly believe in their mission. We certainly believe in what they're getting done, not only in retaining talent, but also going out and acquiring talent, acquiring a top 11 overall prospect in the On3 industry portal rankings. Certainly cannot be upset with that. Those things don't happen without the Battles in, and the Battles in doesn't happen without your support. They went out there and proved it to you last year by building and helping Coach Norvell build a roster to go 13-0, and and I think it's what we the least that we can do to help support that mission. You may have thoughts on NIL. You may have questions on NIL. You may love it. You may hate it. I, I don't really care, but if you want your favorite team to compete and you want to help do something about it, you've never had as big of an opportunity as you do now, go to thebattlesin.com. Go support today. Comment below if you have questions. Email me at tj at doublefriesnoslaw.com if I can help answer any of those. I certainly would love to have you join that family. I personally give uh, every single month, and I'd appreciate if you would consider doing the same as well. Big shout out here, of course, to Mike Norvell, Adam Fuller, Coach JP, and really the entire defensive staff involved here. Uh, they identified a target they wanted, and they moved in on the kill very, very quickly, um, got them to visit pretty immediately, got him to end up sign, committing to the Knowles. We'd expect that he ends up signing the, the paperwork needed, enrolling in January and being here for tour of duty that his dad got to go through uh, a long time ago. And so exciting day for the Knowles for sure, but a, a lot of credit to, again, Fuller, JP, Norvell, uh, Odell certainly involved there with some defensive line stuff. And for all that we've talked about with defensive line recruiting and you know wanting Florida State to increase there, wanting them to take another step at that level at the high school level they certainly continue to impress in the portal and nobody is going to complain about getting a kid that is top 15 in those on three industry rankings especially when that kid is a legacy you can say whatever you want about this pickup a lot of people don't think that uh, marvin jones jr has developed or progressed the same way they thought he would back in 2021 and again that's kind of where i caution fans into saying listen this is probably not the five-star prospect that you thought you were had a chance to get in 2021, though he picked the dogs. Um, so maybe lower those expectations just a tad, but still realize that you're getting a, an elite talent, a frame that you just absolutely can't teach. You can't teach size or athleticism. And then some really good tools that if Florida State's development can continue to trend in the way that it has, if Florida State's development can continue to develop kids like a Pat Payton, like a Jermaine Johnson, like a Jared Verse, and really round off some of those rough edges, you could be looking at a very, very good prospect in the next year or two. I think it's going to take time, but at the end of the day, this is still a kid that is rated very highly, is very physically gifted, and who knows, maybe a change of scenery really is the answer for Marvin Jones Jr. I think that the way he was being used, being somewhat of a problem there at UGA, uh, a new landscape, a new change of scenery, a lot of people have told me that his heart was kind of always with FSU, but ended up choosing UGA due to some other factors that we don't necessarily need to go into on this. But I think that being back home, a uh, place that he obviously grew up around with his dad being a legend, will be really good for him. And if that's kind of the key that sparks the ignition, then I think Florida State fans will be really, really happy with this pickup. I expect Marvin Jones Jr. to play this year. I don't think this is some kind of a, hey, we're being nice to you, so we're giving you a spot because you're a, a legends kid. I expect him to play this year. I expect him to be effective. I want to know your thoughts. want to hear what you think. Has it been worth the wait? Obviously, you still would have liked to have him in 2021's class if you could, or the 2022 class if you could, but um, certainly happy to have Marvin Jones Jr. in the fold now. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. A lot more coming. We are not anywhere close to done with this week, with announcements, with recruiting, with the portal, with everything else. So make sure that you're locked in here with the channel. Thank you guys for tuning in. Support the battle's end, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Go Knowles.